who do you follow? Jesus or Yeshua? Now the question, is that the same person? Or are these two different individuals? This presentation is not intended to condemn or to judge people, but to encourage each one to study for themselves and to find out. If these things are so according to Scripture, this is what the Bereans did, and we are admonished to follow the example. We are admonished in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Then we have 1 John 4, 1. It goes even one step further because it states, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That can only be done if we are willing to take the entire Bible as our final authority, starting, of course, in Genesis 1.1. We will never have a clear, complete, and true understanding if we start in the middle of Scripture. The question is, is there more than one Messiah? And if, which one do I, do you, follow? Messiahs come in all colors and styles and shapes. Unfortunately, most of the people made up their own Messiah, or they follow a Messiah that their religious leaders have introduced to them. Ironically, these false messiahs bear a striking resemblance of themselves, but they have very little or nothing at all in common with the Messiah of Scripture, with the Hebrew Yeshua HaMashiach. In Matthew twenty four twenty four, the true Messiah made the following prophecy, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. There are many man-made of false messiahs and it is our responsibility that we check them out with scriptures and see which one is false and which one is true as an example does a pope proclaim a false messiah by claiming that the wafer is being changed into the actual body of christ the true Messiah, which the people eat at communion? According to Paul, in 2 Corinthians 11, 3-4, there will be a false or counterfeit Messiah, a false counterfeit spirit, and a false counterfeit gospel presented and will be accepted by the majority. And in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, Paul added, As we said before, so say I now again, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The question is, why are so many people willing to accept a false gospel, a false prophet, a false messiah. Could it be due to ignorance? Is there any excuse for ignorance? Second Peter three five states For this 
they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. There is no excuse, especially when we are talking about a willing ignorance. We are personally responsible to find out what the difference is between the true and the false messiah. When Yeshua was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples asked him, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And then he told them in Matthew 24, 4 and 5, the first sign to look for. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah and shall deceive many. In verse 25 of chapter 24, Yeshua said, Behold, I have told you before. That means there is no excuse. I have warned you so that you don't need to be deceived. What is the goal of false messiahs and false prophets? To deceive means to mislead and to lead astray in order to destroy. Even Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's his goal, that's his purpose, and that's all he wants. And this deceiver called Satan is especially active during the last days of this world, just before the second coming of Yeshua. As we read in Revelation 12.12, 12, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Another question, how close will the counterfeit be? It says that even the very elect are in danger of being led astray. Another question, who are the elect? According to Revelation chapter 14, the elect are those that are not defiled with women or churches or denominations. Number two, they are virgins. Number three, they follow only the Lamb wherever he goes. And number four, in their mouth is found no guile. They are without fault before Yahweh, our God. The Holy Scripture, beginning at Genesis chapter 1 1, is our only safety and the final authority which the elect will follow. Today we see much confusion in this respect. Satan transformed as an angel of light, as we have read, is trying everything in his power to deceive the very elect. There are over 41,000 denominations, we are told, and churches and sects and groups that all claim to possess the key to the kingdom. Confusion? the commandments of Yahweh, or the traditions and doctrines of men. The whole world has been lied to and tricked. 
As an example, in the 3rd century, Emperor Constantine introduced another messiah, a false messiah, full of pagan sun worship and customs. With greasy grace and cheap agape love, where no one is interested in doing what the Creator says or desires, but what they themselves want to do. This here is a Greek version of Messiah, which is a counterfeit of the genuine Hebrew Messiah called Yeshua HaMashiach. Though we have a false Messiah, we are talking about complete ignorance. As an example, in the Western world, we have grown up in complete ignorance in the Feast of Yahweh and have adopted pagan sun god worship festivals in their place. Although we have grown up in complete ignorance of the Torah, the Torah is the foundation of the entire scripture. If we do not understand God's plan as revealed in the Torah, we can confuse the scripture for an entire lifetime. The Torah is the self-revelation of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. A religion without Torah leads without question to paganism and to the worship of a golden calf. Let's ask a question. Are you following the son of Yahweh? The lion of the tribe of Judah? Or do you follow the sun god? Because there's a big difference and it's a matter between life and death. Actually, we are talking about worship. The question is, do we serve the Greek Jesus or the Hebrew Yeshua? What is the difference? Is there a difference? Yeshua keeps Torah. He is 100% Torah observant. He is a living Torah. On the other hand, the Greek Jesus, or the Greek Messiah, claims that the Torah ended at the cross and is not binding anymore. Yeshua kept and sanctified the weekly Sabbath while on earth which he himself instituted in Eden. And you can read it in Genesis chapter 2, the verses 2 and 3. He also went as his custom was to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. While on the other hand, the Greek Jesus instituted through Constantine the first day of the week called Sunday to honor the sun god. There is not one singular scriptural mandate to keep the first day of the week. The Catholic Church admits that they made the change from Sabbath to Sunday, while on the other hand, Protestantism is trying to prove from scripture that the Messiah is the one that made the change. So the question, who really made the change? Which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. And this is from Peter Geierman, The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, page 50, 
third edition, 1957. So at least the Catholic Church, they're honest. They admit that they're the one that made the change. Yeshua kept the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which, according to Genesis 23, 4, and 5, was instituted by him. Therefore, these are called his feasts. And his followers followed his example and kept Passover, as well as unleavened bread, after his crucifixion, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 6. So here is a question again, why don't we keep them today as so-called Christians? While the Greek Jesus keeps Easter, a pagan holiday in honor to Astara, for Iestre, the fertility goddess of spring. And if you don't believe that, look up the etymology of Easter in any dictionary. Again, who made the change? Here we have uh, an admission by T. Enright, Bishop of Alphonsus Church, St. Louis, Missouri, from June 1905. He states, the Catholic Church abolished not only the Sabbath, but all the other Jewish festivals. Yeshua was born in the fall of the year, most likely during the Feast of Tabernacles. Most Bible scholars agree with that. While the false Messiah celebrates his birth on December 25, which was the ancient winter solstice when the sun was reborn. The fact is that the birthday of the Babylonian sun god Tammuz was celebrated on December 25. The birthday of the Egyptian sun god Ra was celebrated on December 25. The birthday of the uh, Greek sun god Zeus was celebrated on December 25. The birthday of the Roman sun god Mithra was celebrated also on December 25. Nowhere in scripture are we given the date, nor are we told to celebrate his birthday, the birthday of Yeshua HaMashiach. In fact, we are told that the day of death is better than the day of birth in Ecclesiastes 7.1. However, the son of Yahweh did celebrate Hanukkah, the festival of light, according to John 20.22. 20, One thing is certain. The son of Yahweh, by the name of Yeshua, was not born on December 25. The festival of Christmas was celebrated by pagan societies many centuries before the birth of Christ. There is absolutely no record in the Bible of anyone observing Christmas. There is not even a hint of a Christmas celebration or anything remotely like it. Would you feel honored? Say that I want to honor you. So I throw a big party every year on your worst enemy's birthday. Decorate with your enemy's favorite styles and serve foods that your enemy loves but that are an abomination to you. Would you overlook all this and take it as an honor if I said that even though these things had origins from your enemy, I was now dedicating them to you with a sincere heart. No? Then what makes you think Yeshua will? Remember, Yeshua will not be mocked. See Galatians chapter 5, 
verse 7. Yeshua, the true Messiah, was baptized by immersion, according to Matthew 3, 6 and John 3, 23. Why the Greek Messiah teaches baptism by sprinkling, which loses the symbolism of being buried and resurrected with him to new life. Baptism by immersion represents the burial and resurrection. See Romans 6 2 and Colossians 2 12. Yeshua died for the remission of our sins, according to Matthew 26 28. For this is my blood, he says, of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Yeshua did not die to destroy the Torah, to nail the Torah to the cross. See Matthew 5.17 He says, Think not that I am come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill to do. John 14.15 states, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Or John 14.21, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Again, it was the Greek Jesus, the Greek Messiah, that nailed the Torah to the cross. Ask any Sunday-keeping pastor, and he will verify it by wrongly quoting Colossians 2.14 as the proof. However, Yeshua, the Hebrew Messiah, nailed the records of our confessed and forsaken sins to the cross but under no circumstances in the Torah. Yeshua kept all of his instituted feast days, weekly and yearly. You can read it yourself in John 7.37, John 7.2, Luke 22.8-10, Luke 2.41-42, John 2.23, John 7.8 and 14. while the false messiah claims that paul in galatians 4 8 to 11 called yahweh's holy yearly feasts weak and beggarly elements that lead to bondage and keeping them meant that he labored in vain for them however the context proves that it was a pagan days of the no gods in verse 8 that converts were turning to again, verse 9, that made Paul feel he labored in vain. Neither Yeshua, the son of Elohim, the son of God, nor Paul would ever call the days the Creator himself had instituted as a perpetual sign between himself and his people weak and beggarly elements that lead to bondage. Only the false messiah, the Antichrist, would say such a thing, because he hates Yahweh, he hates his Torah, including his yearly Sabbath days. There is only one intercessor between God and men, the Son of Yahweh, who will cleanse us from sin. See 1 Timothy 2.5 and first John one nine, and we are to call no man our spiritual father, the Matthew twenty three verse nine. The Greek Jesus claims that Mary, his earthly mother, is our intercessor. 
Men must pray to her for forgiveness of sins and salvation, and she in turn will intercede. Here is one of those prayers from the Internet. It states, Remember, O most loving Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we turn to you, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, our mother of the Word incarnate. Do not despise our petitions, but in your mercy hear us and answer us. Amen. What a sad deception, my friend. Millions of people in this world are deceived and believe this, and are ignorant of the real Messiah, the Son of the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Only Yeshua, our Savior, the Hebrew Messiah, can forgive our sins. Luke 5.26 and Mark chapter 2, the verses 3 to 12. The Catholic Church, as an example, says that the priest has power to forgive sins. This is one of the Bible definitions for blasphemy. See Matthew 9, 2-3. They are the call the priests, Father. Yeshua stated in Leviticus chapter 11 that unclean foods should never be eaten, and according to Paul in Acts 11, verse 8, either before or after the cross. The Greek Jesus, the Greek Messiah, says by misapplying Matthew 15, 11, Not that which goes into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Claiming that now after the cross, suddenly, man can eat pigs and is clean. As an example, Eating ham on Easter Sunday stems from pagan rituals to avenge the death of Tammuz by a wild boar. Yeshua formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, a living being. Genesis 2.7 So man is mortal. Yeshua told Adam in Genesis 2, 16 to 17, you may freely eat from every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You are not to eat from it because on the day that you eat from it, it will become certain that you will die. This is taken from the complete Jewish Bible. The false messiah claims that man received an immortal soul and therefore is immortal. For the serpent told Eve in Genesis 1-4, Ye shall not surely die. Is man immortal? Scripture states as a fact, very plainly, that only the Creator, Yeshua HaMashiach, has immortality. 1 Timothy 6.16 And He will give it to the redeemed at the time of the resurrection of the just. The great deceiver, however, in the form of the serpent, promised Adam eternal life in disobedience. The Son of God said that man is mortal. The Greek Messiah, Satan, said that man is immortal 
or has an immortal soul? Who do you believe? The true Messiah, Yeshua, was crucified on a Wednesday and was raised three days and three nights later on a weekly Sabbath. Search it out for yourself. History and scripture will prove it to be true. However, the false Messiah, according to tradition, was crucified on a Friday and raised on the first day of the week. Do your own research. You will be amazed as what you will find. The ministry of the true Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, lasted only 490 days according to prophecy and not three and a half years as tradition teaches it. Is the Messiah that you are following one of three gods? Or is it the Hebrew Yeshua HaMashiach, the one and only true son of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? Think of the words in Matthew 24, 5, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. Are you following the Son of Yahweh? As I mentioned in the beginning, false messiahs come in all colors, shapes and variations in order to deceive, to mislead and to destroy. How only can we differentiate the false from the true? Only as we do what Isaiah 8.20 states to the Torah and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Study and consider the evidence. We must personally find out by studying what is tradition and what is fact. Again the question, the most important question, are you following Yeshua, the Hebrew Messiah? Or have you unknowingly been following the Sun God? We are talking about eternal life and eternal death. His true children, I believe with all my heart, will not be deceived because the teachings of the false messiah, the Antichrist, do not in any way agree with scripture, to the Torah and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. If you are Messiah, is the Hebrew Yeshua HaMashiach, the Sovereign, Mighty Holy One, the Chief Cornerstone. If your Messiah is the Aleph and Tav, the Alpha and Omega, the First and the Last, the Beginning and the End. If your Messiah is the Son of Yahweh, Yahweh in the flesh, a completely sufficient Savior, eternally existent, creator of all things, who became flesh, subject to no human, reigns over all, was born of a virgin. If your Messiah's ministry lasted exactly 490 days, according to prophecy, while on earth and not three and a half years, 
If your Messiah shed his priceless blood for his elect, who laid his life down on a Wednesday, the fourteenth day of the first month, at 3 p.m. upon a tree. If your Messiah took that life up again on a Sabbath, after being three days and three nights in the grave, snatch the keys of hell and remove the sting of death. If your Messiah is the Prince of Peace, the Great Physician Emmanuel, Yah with us, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light, who came to uphold Torah with all the commandments, statutes, judgments, and testimonies, who is a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. If your Messiah is a faultless, sinless, unblemished Lamb of Elohim, the only mediator between Yahweh and men, If your Messiah is a narrow gate, the way, the truth, the life, the only way to the Father. If your Messiah is worthy to receive glory and honor and power for ever and ever. If your Messiah is, was, and is soon to come back again as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If that is the case, then you follow and worship the Messiah of Scripture. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30, it states, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Let us joyfully follow the true Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the way, the truth, and the life, is my sincere prayer. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom.